Okay, so let me show you guys. There were two tweets that really, really got under my skin. Um, they're very different tweets, as you're about to see, but for basically opposite reasons, they got under my skin. So take a look at this. This guy is Ian Bremmer. I think he's some sort of centrist pundit. He said, re-elect Trump rally unbeknownst to the participants. And what he's showing there is a DSA rally, I believe in New York, and it says, abolish ICE, abolish profit. Now, the idea that Ian Bremmer is getting at there, um, the core of it, the heart of it, is totally incorrect. And this is something I've, I've seen a lot of lately. There's been so many articles that are like, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez can win in the Bronx, but her kind of uh, Democrat can't win in the Midwest. Nothing could be further from the truth. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is populist left. She fights for the working class. Those are the exact kind of Democrats that can win in the Midwest and can win anywhere in the country. I mean, look at what happened. Just take West Virginia, for example. Um... You know, but this, this, you can extrapolate for Kansas, for Oklahoma, for any of a number of places. They had a teacher strike. They were the first ones to, to fight back, to have the workers really organize and fight back, and they won. So that's the, those, those kinds of people, those leftists, those working class Americans, those are the exact kinds of people that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez wins. She wanted, she crushed in every demographic, guys. And, you know, one thing I saw is, us, oh, the demographic changes in the district. So, in other words, that's them saying, she's a person of color, there are more people of color in the district, and that's why she won. So, it's this implied argument of, like, it's just, it's just racial tribalism among people. Yeah, but why, that doesn't account at all for the fact that she won, uh, mostly white Astoria by the biggest margin. So, they're just, they, it's all excuses, it's all downplaying. I've seen so many articles that are like, Oh, she, if, if we really want the Democrats to win in 2020, I'm not kidding. Somebody argued we need to go with the Bloomberg route as opposed to the Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez route. So you mean the billionaire who's in favor of stop and frisk and who uh, wanted to ban big gulps? That's, that's the route we need to go? The billionaire asshole, not even left wing route? That's, that's the way we got to go. So they don't know what they're talking about. The, the, and here's the main point. The Democratic Party has been in the hands of these corporate, centrist, neoliberal warmongers for decades. Decades. And what do we have to show for it? I'll tell you what we have to show for it. Republican president, Republican House representatives, Republican Senate, uh, majority Republican governors, majority Republican state legislatures. I'd be surprised if there weren't a majority Republican dog catchers in the country right now. So, we've had that philosophy in control. And it didn't work. We lost, because there, it's not an appealing philosophy. Hillary Clinton lost to Donald Trump, and these idiots are still out there going, You know, we can use a Hillary Clinton-style Democrat. We need to run those Democrats everywhere in the country. So when Ian Bremmer looks at a gathering of people on the left and goes, Ah! re-elect Trump rally, um, that is nothing but projection. Because it's Ian Bremmer, when he gets together with his buddies, that group of respectable people wearing suits and ties and taking corporate money, yes, those are the people who are much more likely to re-elect Trump. So, the answer to fight back against the Republicans and the fake populists on the right, it's real populists on the left. We literally just saw this happen in Mexico. Uh, the Bernie Sanders of Mexico just won his election. A candidate who's described as populist left, who's described as uh, anti-corruption. So that's exactly what we need here in the U.S. So Ian Bremmer is just factually wrong. But now, let me show you something that pissed me off in the other direction. Take a look at this tweet. New York City DSA tweeted, Abolish profit, abolish prisons, Abolish cash bail, abolish borders. And then you can see the sign is the same sign, abolish ice, abolish profit. Now, I've spoken before on this show about how I'm generally a fan of DSA. I am. Um, we probably agree on over 85% of the issues. They are some of the best in the country at organizing to fight for Medicare for All. 
Uh, they do the same thing with free college uh, on pretty much all of the important issues, the, the big, important benchmark issues. They're out there. They're fighting the good fight. Uh, they're organizing. They're doing the work. And they deserve a hell of a lot of credit. And I'm not just saying that. However, this goes too far. <laughs> so, listen, if you want to say abolish private prisons, the answer is yes, hell yes, let's do that right now. If you want to say abolish cash bail, as you did, yes, hell yes, uh, we can do that right now. We should do that right now. If you want to say abolish ICE, I agree with you on that one too. Now, that requires a little bit more of an explanation because regular people, when they hear abolish ICE, they're not, they're not policy wonks. They don't know exactly what that means. So what you, when you say that, what they hear is, so you want to get rid of all immigration enforcement and have no immigration enforcement whatsoever? And my response to that is, well, no. You have Customs and Border Protection. You have countless other government agencies that, uh, you know, handle immigration. ICE is overkill, number one. And number two, it was created during the Bush administration at, with the Patriot Act and... It, all it's been used for is harassing people. It's like the Gestapo of the U.S. I mean, that's how it functions. So, abolishing ICE, I agree with, but you do have to explain more on that front. But then the rest of them is, honestly, we've gotten into cuckoo land here. Abolish profit? What does that even mean? Abolish all profit? All profit. Now, there might be some people listening to this who are to the left of me, Okay, fair enough, but this is like a circle jerk of far leftism. If you're putting that on a sign and thinking that that's popular and that'll win elections. No, that is not popular, that will not win elections, and it also is barely coherent. Again, I don't even know what that means. Abolish profit. All profit? So you're, there's no distinction between, um, you know, multinational corporations worth billions of dollars and... Your local deli, your local dry cleaner, your local small business, all profit is bad. That's the, all profit is bad? I don't agree with that. I think most Americans don't agree with that. In fact, I know most Americans don't agree with that. That is genuinely radical. That is post-capitalist. And that is not something, that's, not only will that not win elections, yes, that will lose elections. 100%. Uh, here's another one that I am, by no stretch of the imagination, uh, uh, by no stretch of the imagination on board with. Abolish borders. No, no, no. Do not be the goofy caricature of the left that the right paints you as. Okay? Because that idea is honestly silly. Because, listen, it's the old conundrum. You can either have a welfare state and borders, or no welfare state and no borders. Which is why, you know, there are... Um, there are many libertarians who are against the idea of borders. But if you have a welfare state, of course, if you have a giant social safety net, which I'm in favor of 100%, yes, you need borders. Yes, you need some rules. Now, are we far too right wing on the spectrum when it comes to immigration today? Uh, fuck yeah, I think we are. I mean, we were just breaking up families and there's been countless stories of, you know, people, undocumented immigrants who come into the country, ICE arrest them, and then there are literal court cases now about how they're using them as forced labor. Another word for that is slavery. So there's allegations of slavery against ICE. There's uh, countless allegations of uh, rape and misconduct and sexual assault and things of that nature. Uh, there's allegations of undocumented immigrants being ripped out of the hospital. One of them had a fucking brain tumor in the process. We're doing... We're, a zero-tolerance policy that criminally prosecutes everybody who crosses the border. Yes, we are way far right-wing on border policy, and that needs to change. But the idea that we should have no borders, again, not only is that not popular and will hurt you in elections, it's also just silly. I think that's a genuinely silly position. So, you know, I've said uh, time and time again, I'm totally in favor of deporting criminals. You, violent criminals. You want to deport people who are violent criminals? Pfft, by all means. 100% totally with you on that front. I don't think it's a legitimate position to talk about no borders. So, I just, I, I wanted to do this segment to talk about how defeating Trump and defeating the right, it doesn't just mean 
go as far left as humanly possible. What it means is you go populist left. You go libertarian left. So what that means is populist left is the ideas that win in every district in the entire country except the richest districts. So ideas that win in poor communities, lower middle class communities, middle class communities, and even upper middle class communities. Medicare for all, free college, living wage, end the wars, new new deal, get money out of politics. These are ideas that are overwhelmingly popular. Um, the libertarian aspect of libertarian leftism is stuff like ending the drug war, legalizing marijuana, um, you know, uh, supporting minority rights like gay rights, for example. These are ideas that win overwhelmingly across the country. But arguing for populist left ideas, libertarian left ideas, does not mean that you take every weird caricature of the left that the right has, and then you embody that and argue for that position, like abolishing profit and abolishing borders. Oh, abolish prisons is the other one I didn't even talk about yet. They don't just mean private prisons, guys, they mean prisons. And they actually, at their convention, they had a vote, and they ended up putting abolish prisons in their platform. So, like, all prisons? So what do you do with people who committed rape? What do you do with people who committed violent assault? What do you do with people who committed murder? What do you do with serial killers? What do you do with terrorists? What do you do? See, this is, this is the caricature of the left that the right has. Like, oh, look at these idiots. They want no order in society. They want no borders. They want no profit. They want to sc totally scrap capitalism. They want to abolish prisons. That's just a complete and utter disconnect from the nature of the world that we live in. Now, I'm in favor of literally releasing every non-violent uh, drug offender in the country. So we're talking about emptying the... 20 to 30 percent, maybe even more, of the people in prisons, they're going to be freed tomorrow. That's my ideal. Get rid of all the non-violent drug offenders out of prison. Another thing I would do to prisons is reform them to gear them more towards rehabilitation than just punishment. In the U.S., we gear it overwhelmingly towards punishment. So I would reform it to make it more like the Scandinavian model. But to totally abolish prisons, I honestly can't even believe I have to come out here and argue against that in a segment because that's such a silly idea, I wouldn't expect anybody to even float that idea ever. But yet, here we are. So... Silly idea genuinely would hurt the left if this is something that's pushed and put front and center. So, I, this is the first time I've seen... Like, don't get me wrong, I've seen things on what I would call the authoritarian left that annoy the shit out of me. You know, that's the, the classic example of the college kid who's censoring people and saying, deplatforming people and they don't want speakers who they disagree with to come there. So there's stuff on the authoritarian left that I've definitely disagreed with and been like, stop it. I'm not sure I've ever seen ideas like this, which are put forward as serious policy ideas on the left that I've disagreed with so vehemently. But here we are. So again, this is why I think you need strong leadership on the left for the revolution. This is why I think you need to stick to populist left ideas, economically left ideas, socially libertarian ideas, because those are the ideas that'll win, and I think those are the policies that this country needs. I don't at all think this country needs to abolish borders, abolish prisons, and abolish profit. I think that is too far left, and honestly, I think it's comically so.